It's important to properly dispose of unwanted medication or sharps. MedProject offers free and convenient disposal options near you. To learn more, call 844-MEDPROJECT or visit medproject.org. Hello, J360 Legion, and welcome to another J360 Mini Bite, hosted by J.M. Brady. And I am your host, J.M. Brady. How's it going, J360 Legion? <laughs> Miss me? Miss the group? Well, guess what? We're back this week. Yeah, it turns out the giant hiatus we had there actually worked out pretty good for us because things are all evened out on the uh, website front and everything else. Just have to make sure everything comes back in a pretty big way. So far, so good. I mean, you're talking 188 episodes to move around. But keep in mind, while I was off the mic, I was keeping my ear low to the ground. I managed to see a few things. So a lot of y'all are planning to storm Area 51, huh? Really? (laughs) You all do know that it is an active military installation, and with you just being there and you're not military personnel, they can wipe you out without even giving you a warning, right? It's just like going to the oil refinery at any sort of military installation. If you do not have the grounds and reasons to be there, pow, 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 that's it. I should have had a real life gun effect here, but you know what? You guys can't handle that right now. We're all on high alert, but the truth is, is this, you know, it was funny for a little bit. The idea of you breaking in there and coming out with a halo ghost that you can ride around with and have all sorts of artifacts and probably have that E.T. friendship going on, even though E.T. kind of bonded with the boy a little too deeply, if you ask me, but, uh, actually not really. It was just a movie about a little alien and his friend and he's trying to get him home. I was, I'm sure a lot of y'all want to do these things, but here, here's the problem, right? <laughs> Some of y'all are just a little bit too lazy to do this kind of stuff, and not only that, the meme is fun. I, I like the meme that's fun, but when you got some people that actually think that they're going to go up into a military installation and come out with no, bu- with, with no bullet holes in them, <laughs> you must be insane. It's just, you know, like when we have little things like that, right? You always got those people that go a little too damn far with it. Just like some of the people I hear talking at work. I'm like, yeah, all right, you're woefully incompetent here. How the hell do you think you're going to go ahead and pull off something this tactical here? But it's kind of like with Dane Cook and one of the rare moments that I mentioned about Dane Cook and his comedy styles because he's just not that funny to me. But he has a point that every person out here wants to do a heist (laughs) and rather than do a beneficial kind of heist you know what i'm saying like making sure that certain uh fat cats don't get their kickbacks every quarter and stuff you know some people want to go ahead and break into a military installation with alien uh setups just so they can have alien artifacts just how silly people are nowadays uh, but before we get too into that, I can cover that on the J-Man show another time. It's just that if you know, some of you dumbasses go out there and do that kind of stuff and you won't be around anymore, keep in mind, I will not mourn for you for doing something very, very foolish, especially something like that. Because if there's something that's competent, it would be our military from time to time. Yeah, even though you got a lot of dumb people over there and the political game, it's usually pretty on point with our military. But, however, that's not the main course of today's uh, mini bite. Hey, so um, it turns out that the new 007 is going to be a black woman. Cool. Cool. Very, very interesting. Very interesting. Here's the problem what I have with Bond 25, right? I don't know the plot. It's one of those kind of things, guys. I mean, like, look. You know, when people ask me about the Little Mermaid being black, you know what I was like? I was like, yeah, I don't care. I'm glad that she is, I'm glad that the lady who actually has the role can sing. I'm glad that she can perform. I don't think she'll do any damage to the role. But it's like, this whole thing, you know, everybody's race lifting and gender bending for established properties. You know what I'm saying? They're trying to bank on everything while trying to adjust social issues of the times, and they're using established franchises for it. 
Now, it's debatable whether it's actually a good thing or a bad thing. Does it help? Does it nurture? What does it do? But it's like one of those kind of band-aids that we as a society keep tugging and pulling at and then covering up when the tide is not so, you know, when the tide is low. But when it's time for that peak interest again, rip it open once again to go ahead and show, yeah, we do care about the plights of the day. We will change this. This will actually solve that problem. No, it won't. No, it won't. I kind of want to know the plot. You know what I'm saying? Certain movies, when they get announced, it's kind of like that Spider-Man thing. It's like, oh, yeah, Sony wants to get out of the Marvel Studios deal if Spider-Man Far From Home doesn't reach a billion dollars. It's like, once again, where the hell do you guys come off with this stuff? Sell the movie. I don't care who you cast for the role as long as they do their job in the movie. You know what I'm saying? All these characters that we watch are fictional, yes. Um, I think Scarlett Johansson kind of is in a in a controversy or something like that because of what she said about her job. She should be able to portray anything. Don't you know what the world theater was all about? Like, she was all set to play as a transgender character, and then all of a sudden people were upset about that because it wasn't a transgender person playing a transgender character. Isn't that kind of a reverse of what's going on? You know how stupid that sounds? It's like, once again, we don't know where we're going, do we? You know what I'm saying? She should be able to portray anything much in the same way we should have this black James Bond character that's going to take over the moniker as 007, and much as we have uh, Haley Bailey playing the role of Ariel in the new Little Mermaid movie. It shouldn't be this kind of a controversy. It's not controversial anymore. It's just like, it's, it's like, once again, that we as a society try to move forward in some areas, try to move forward in some areas, but then you got certain institutions that are like, oh yeah, this is new. This, this will end this. I'm like, what the hell is wrong with people? Really? And, and then trying to turn all the established superheroes gay, but there are gay superheroes out there that are not getting pushed. I'm like, you know, once again, if this is a huge issue, wouldn't you work as hard as, like, say, Todd McFarlane and actually have that certain character that can be pushed into being the whole new area? Like, like once again, everybody's talking about there's no originality, there's no building up properties. You know why they do this stuff, right? Because it's, <laughs> it's easy. It's the same reason why the Ghostbusters 2016 movie exists. All four of those ladies are funny. And Paul Fiji is a good director, but the thing about, or Paul Fig, or however you say his name, but we'll just say Fiji for our sake of argument. But once again, if it's not something that's actually built from the ground up, and it's just something that's banking off of a moniker that's already established, already in gene to the society, you know that these would-be studios, or these conglomerates, I should say, don't have to work as hard. They figure, hey, you know what? We go ahead and do it this way. We go ahead and we race lift or we gender bend all these certain areas. And instead of creating archetypes, we use the stereotypes. That'll solve and hold it up while we make our billion dollars in revenue. Sad but true. They don't care about the plights of what we do. It's the talk in town. That's what they're trying to bank off of. And at the end of the day, you realize how hollow the victory is because after a while, what, what happens when we soak into that? After a while, you don't even think about it anymore because you got some people out here that are so amped up and ramped up about the Lion King movie. They forgot about, say, the Christopher Robin movie. They forgot about, a lot of y'all forgot about Aladdin, to be honest with y'all. Y'all are like, oh, well, I didn't know that movie came out. Too much controversy it did, but once again, you can't please everybody, especially that special percentage that complains, complains, and complains. No matter if you make the main character black, no matter if you gender bend a certain established secret agent as a woman. And speaking of which, it's not the same character as James Bond, per se, but here's the thing. That James Bond character went through so many transformations throughout each and every single movie that was made, and now you got this, uh, new female stepping in and it's not to say she couldn't do the job but i'm like wondering okay what or who main villains is she fighting against is she fighting against spectra is she fighting against a whole different organization all its own uh is she gonna be like cleopatra jones is she gonna be like 
You know what I'm saying? Like, who in the world is she going to be? Is James Bond doing a mentorship program or something? Yeah, it's little things like that. And it's not to say that she couldn't hold her own. I mean, after all, she's got to go through the same rigorous trainings that he does, right? But once again, like, why are you telling me this or anybody all this information here without giving us the gist of the storyline and the plot? I mean, after all, we've done the same thing for the uh, Fantastic Four 2015 movie, remember? When they race-lifted Johnny and (laughs) you know what I'm saying? Like, Michael B. Jordan's a great actor and all, and I thought he did okay as Johnny, but Johnny didn't have any character development in the film. You see what I'm saying? That didn't bother me. It's just like, how hard is it to do a damn Fantastic Four movie? I'm sure I could do one now with action figures. And I probably will, just to test that theory. But at the same time, though, it's like, every, everything's got to be 100% accurate with people. But when you really think about it, when you take an established franchise and you gender bend it, or you race lift it, in a way, you're solve- you think you're solving a problem. But you're probably making more things because guess what? This character here might be a stereotype, might not be as well developed as it should be. And then you go ahead and you throw us this because that's your selling point rather than telling us what the plot is or giving us some intricate things. Or, hey, here's the fun part, taking up people from the independent market and letting them do their new stance on everything. And and that's what's so sad about it, guys. Everybody talks about equality. They talk about, oh, yeah, we we should be equal, equal. But once again, people have forgotten what equality means. Okay? Equality is supposed to benefit everybody. Everybody is supposed to have a win in this situation. Not the one person that always loses and all that kind of stuff. That's why equality sometimes can be a real pipe dream. You got to work with everybody. And not only that, right? Stop using race as your way to sell something. Give us some give us some strong entertainment. Give us something that you could build a franchise off of instead of a nice cash cow. You know what I'm saying? Give us something that can be an icon in later years. Not like everybody sitting there saying, yeah, you know what? Throughout the new 10s and going into the new 20s, uh, uh, we, we started to go ahead and do more, more of this whole thing. We started to go ahead and milk the modern franchises for what they're worth. We didn't try to create anything new, but we wanted to back off of nostalgia and take the easy way out so in hopes of keeping everybody uh, uh, satisfied and not only that, but keeping my pockets full of cash. It's like after a while, you know, it's a reach. They keep reaching for too much. I mean, it's just like the new Terminator movie that's coming. I mean, I saw that where they had a trailer strictly for that special percentage out there, you know, which was a mixture of the LBGTQ and um, women's lib. And like at the same time, why do you need two trailers? All we needed was one trailer to sell the point back in the day. It's just people have gotten so far away. I always ask, what was the end goal of all of this? And then it's like, they they forget it themselves. They figure, hey, this is a way to quell all this stuff. But, you know, the more and more we keep doing this and slapping equality on it, the more we're dividing everything. And it's just one of them kind of things you think about from time to time. But, you know, I'm not saying that these things shouldn't happen. I'm not saying that new stuff, you know, shouldn't come our way. But I would love some new franchises. I would love some new IPs. Hell, I'll go ahead and start writing them and throwing them out there. And the whole point about it is, is that, you know, just because somebody falls in love doesn't mean they're weak. Just because somebody is a supporting role doesn't mean that they're not helping that main character get to where they need to be. You look at Joseph Campbell's Man of a Thousand Faces, or in this case, you look at Joseph Campbell's Person of a Thousand Faces, or the writer's journey in general, and see how it goes. That's what you ought to do if you really want to step into this whole ideal of modern storytelling. Here's the thing, right? Don't just bank on the race and the gender of that character. Who is this character? What is this character going to go through? And what is the overall end goal of this character? You see what I'm saying? And while you're at it, at that point, you probably won't even care about race that much. Because it takes time to actually create strong 
or in your idea of what strong is, because what is strong to a lot of you? You know what I'm saying? That's the real question. What is strong to a lot of you? So try to figure that out because we're getting a little too close on time. But this is your mini bite and I am J-Man and I will catch you all later. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Jumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Voidware prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.